If you're applying to medicine in the UK, this video is going to give you everything that you need to know when you're answering questions about the NHS at interview. We're gonna talk about key facts that you need to know, how to answer questions really well, and make sure that you've got some really good examples that are gonna make you shine at interview. Unless you've grown up outside of the UK, you'll probably be well aware of the National Health Service, which is our main healthcare provider in the UK. When you qualify as a doctor in the UK, the NHS will be your employer. So it's entirely possible that they may want to ask you some questions testing your knowledge of the NHS, especially if you're applying as an international student. I think when we're trying to define the NHS, actually Wikipedia probably has the most succinct explanation of what it is. The National Health Service is the umbrella term for the publicly funded healthcare system of the United Kingdom. Whether they're deciding to take on students or staff, the NHS recruits and makes their decisions based on something called values-based recruitment. And those values are based according to the constitution of the six Cs. And because the NHS use these values, medical schools use them too to decide who they take on as medical students students for their university. Therefore, many of the stations at interviews are going to be set up to test these values specifically. So keep an eye out when you enter a station to try and work out what the value they are testing that's underpinning the question being asked. That's one big tip that's going to help you be more targeted with your answers when you interview. So now what we're going to do is go through the six C's. I'll take you through all of them in turn and then I'll show you how they're described by NHS England. Then I'm going to show you some tricks how you can show your alignment to each of those values when you're answering questions at interview. These are Care, compassion, communication, competence, courage, and commitment. The first is care. They say that the care we deliver helps the individual person and improves the health of the community as a whole. The way that you can best demonstrate your alignment with care is by talking about any volunteer roles that you've done. This could be working in a care home, looking after people, even things like being a babysitter where you have to look after another person. Compassion is how care is given through relationships. For this, you can draw on examples from your work experience when you saw that people had difficulty and you've helped them work through it. Not only that, you can talk about friends and family that you've helped through difficult times and showed compassion to get them through tricky times. For communication, they say that listening is as important as what we say. It is essential for no decision without me. What they're saying there is that we need to involve the patient with their care. But also ways to show alignment with communication are maybe when you've had tricky communication situations. Maybe you've had situations where you've come across people who have difficulty communicating or difficulty understanding you. Might be people with dementia or hearing or visual difficulties or maybe even young children that don't understand so easily. How have you adapted your communication style to fit that particular need? Then there's competence. All those in caring roles must have the ability to understand an individual's health and social needs. But your demonstration of competence just means that you need to show that you have good ability. This could be areas where you've excelled compared to your peers. Maybe you've won some prizes, maybe you even did an EPQ and got a great grade in it. The next is courage. This enables us to do the right thing for the people we care for and to speak up when we have concerns. For this, maybe you can think of a time where you've helped support someone or spoke out when you've seen somebody suffering an injustice or subpar care. Maybe during your time as a volunteer or when you were shadowing in the hospital, you may have had to help either a relative or a patient by alerting a senior when an issue wasn't being dealt with properly. And finally, we have commitment. The NHS says we need to build on our commitment to improve the care and experience of our patients. You can demonstrate this by showing anything that you've done which is a regular commitment. This could be your volunteering or anything from instruments to sports that you play just to show that you have stickability and you don't give up easily. Anything that you've done for more than three months is a good example of this. Let's take a brief moment to look at the history of the NHS. The NHS was founded in 1948 by the health minister at the time Anurin Nye Bevin. There's a famous quote that's actually incorrectly attributed to Nye Bevin. It was actually initially written by a British sociologist called Thomas Marshall and it said that Illness is neither an indulgence for which people have to pay, nor an offence for which they should be penalised, but a misfortune, the cost of which should be shared by the community. When the NHS was initially founded, it was based on three principles. Now those have evolved, but the core essence of them is still the same today. Those core principles are, number one, that everyone's needs should be met. That means that care is appropriate to all members of society. The second is that it should be free at the point of care. Before that, you either had to pay or go through a charity if you wanted healthcare in the UK. And the third is that care should be based upon a clinical need, not your ability to pay, whereas before people were tiered according to their insurance premium rather than what they actually needed. I think often we underestimate just how lucky we are to have a service like the NHS. It's a service that no matter who you are, you will get whatever you need to restore you back to health for free. We take for granted that many of the world's superpowers don't even meet these basic needs for their citizens. But those were the initial three principles that we have but let's have a look now at how it's evolved into what it is today. The next part I want to talk about is the NHS 
constitution. Now we talked about the six C's and usually the constitution and the six C's are spoken about together. But if you search today, you'll find a document called the NHS constitution, which identifies seven principles that they use to outline what's expected in terms of behavior and how they make their decisions in the NHS. So I'm gonna go through those seven principles with you now, and you will see that how even in essence, they still contain those three core principles that were outlined way back in 1948. The NHS provides a comprehensive service available to all. So essentially it's saying that it doesn't discriminate. Access to the NHS is based on clinical need, like we had in the first principles. The NHS aspires to the highest standards of excellence and professionalism, i.e. ensuring that they're delivering good quality patient care. NHS services must reflect the needs and the preferences of patients, meaning that they should treat them as individuals and involve patients in their care. The NHS works together across organizational boundaries, which means that they sometimes might need to cooperate with other healthcare providers. The NHS is committed to providing the best value for taxpayers, because essentially the taxpayer pays for it and they need to make sure that they're using the money the best possible way that they can for the budget that they have. And the final one is essentially saying that they are accountable to the public and they should be open to scrutiny from others to make sure that they are providing the services to the best of their abilities. So questions like this often come up at MMI and panel interviews. So having a good understanding of the core values, i.e. the six C's and the NHS constitution is really, really important. Questions that might come up might be something like, what do you understand by the NHS core values and the six C's? Or something like, what are the principles that underpin the NHS. Questions around the NHS are often going to be related to hot topics where those values weren't upheld. Or they might even ask you questions about your own experience where you saw that these values either were or weren't embodied. So let's wrap up by quickly having a look at how you can perform well when you get asked questions about the NHS at your interview. So firstly, make sure that you know the six C's. These are the core values by which you're being recruited against. Then it's important to ensure that you've prepared some examples for how you personally align with each of those six C's. Understand the background of the NHS, when and how it came about, as well as the three principles that it was founded upon. It then helps to show that you understand how it's evolved today into the seven principles that form the NHS constitution. We're not expecting you to recite all seven of them, but at least know a few of them and why they're important in today's NHS. The NHS is always in the news. So before you're interviewed, just make sure you're staying up to date with current affairs and news stories regarding the NHS. Be aware of any important milestones or big cases for the NHS and make sure that you have an understanding of its rough structure. And in fact, one of my tutors, Adewale, discusses this very nicely in this video here, so check that out if you want to find out more. If you want a really good PDF where I tell you all of the landmarks, cases, and important hot topics that you need to know about the NHS, I recommend that you check out the online course that I've made, which is over 20 hours of videos to give you everything that you need to know to make sure that you are absolutely bulletproof for your interview. Check that out there, it's really cheap and you get a year's access, and it will just give you everything that you need to make sure that you perform well. So to summarize, you just need to know a little bit about the NHS, when and why it was founded, and the three founding principles. Know how it's evolved, make sure that you understand the six C's, and most importantly, make sure that you've prepared some examples for how you yourself have aligned with those six C's in your own life. So if you want a quick, short fire summary series that's gonna give you everything that you need to know quickly before the interview to make sure that you smash it, check out this interview series that I've made here in this playlist, and that is gonna give you everything that you need to know in probably less than an hour's watching. Enjoy, and I'll see you over in that video.